Welcome back guys, this is Doug with Basement Level Magic. I am back for round one. So this is a pretty awkward hand um, and we definitely need to draw gas from here but it has perfect mana almost. I guess we don't have white do we? Um, and two blighted fens. Uh, but I do have two plays. I'm going to go ahead and do it. It's risky and I probably shouldn't, but... But what the heck. Um, our chances of drawing white mana, it's our most common mana, are pretty high. Uh, our choice of drawing white cards, also pretty high. Uh, so what would we rather have? Probably that one. see is no two or three drop. <laughs> that would be nice. Alright, so this is the guy who has the red allies. Oh, perfect. Alright. So, um, not a lot we can do here. But we'll ping our opponent. Gain a life. He loses a life. But always just a bit. That's really the end of our turn. So we can double block and our opponent can only kill one thing, but I don't think it's worth it at this point. I think the life gain trade on our opponent is worth more than the creature, especially if we're gonna keep drawing allies every turn, and, and chances are we will. I would love to have a second white, so I can play like two things in a turn, but no complaints at this point for me. Gideon's Reproach. Killing the healer? Sure. That's smart. We have another one. Um, I should have sacrificed it in, re in response. And that was a big mistake. Um, my advantage in this matchup against another presumably very aggressive deck is that um, I should have more card draw than he does. So to give up on it is, uh, is a pretty big mistake. Uh, here we are going to go ahead and trade. I can't attack into his Andu Greathorn anyway, so I might as well. Well, there's my second line source. Um, and that time I did want to trade. It's not a mistake there to not use the Vampiric Rites. I'm not trying to prevent damage. I'm trying to remove the creature in that case. Uh, but here, we'll go ahead and just sit back. Let him drop his landfall and attack us for four. And we need a pretty large creature here pretty soon. Pun is playing pretty slow. It's kind of unfortunate to come up against this deck first. Uh, I think it's probably our worst matchup. And that red has uh, somewhat bigger creatures, bigger power anyway. So do I want to trade now in order to uh, prevent some damage? I think I will. Not a bad card. But it wouldn't have been what I wanted to see next turn, so I'm sort of glad I did it. So I can now awaken and create a 2 2. 
again, not really what I'm looking to do at this point. Um, or I can actually the rising miasma for seven, which I guess we're one short of. Uh, but next turn will allow us to kill the undue great horn. So no land drop from my opponent, that's good. Oh, surprise my as is a sorcerer, not an instant. Yeah, that would probably be too good as an instant. So I'm just trying to think, what is it in my best interest to do? Um, I suppose sacrificing the Blighted Fen. To get rid of that one creature is probably the best while we wait to draw one. And we could alternately do the same play again, which I think we will. It's just got a grip full of cards. Wow. Wishing now that I had taken it. Jeez. Alright, so. For seven mana. Which I do have, I can go ahead and create the 3-3. Three, three. Um, so I think probably we do that. Even though we get very little value off of the the minus two minus two, and the reason is because we take four here. But next turn we can prevent the damage and create a two two and hopefully crack back. And stay in the game. Yep. All right, so. Don't have enough mana to do both. Um, so really, the only play here is to go ahead and kill the angel now. Maybe that I just don't have enough top end in this deck. Uh, because now that I'm at so much mana, and really the only thing I'm looking to draw is like, I would like multiple creatures, is really what I would like. So, prevent six damage. I really hate to cast this without Awaken, but. I feel like six is too much to take here, and he used a spell. Ugh. I mean, we definitely have drawn the game out. <laughs> It was very slow start. I mean, I really in a deck like this with like what 16, 17 creatures, I should have like two to three in my opening hand. Ideally, it would be two to three creatures, one uh, spell, and um, 
and the rest lands would be ideal. Really, three lands is probably enough, depending on what they are. I should probably be playing in Evolving Wilds. I did have some opportunities, two opportunities to pick one up, but I did not in favor of other things. Although one of them was a class healer, and I feel like you kind of have to take that card if you're trying for this archetype. Um, that is actually a pretty good draw. It essentially matters not at all what um, color man I leave up, because I have no cards in hand. Although I could potentially draw one, so I guess that is a consideration. We need to draw Drana. Where's Drana? So he's got me on a four turn clock currently, and I have him on what a five turn clock. I guess we'll know if he has a trick if he attacks. Nope, not going to attack. Oh, and I have no black mana. Alright, I think that pretty much does it. So what do we want to do for changes here? I think my asthma against his deck is a little bit unimpressive. He did have a lot of red, um, lower drop creatures. Draw's Emissary would have been nice. Your kind of Assassin would have been nice. And Circling Fissure. Yeah, just creating a 2 2 just. I almost think this card just really should be cast as a 3 mana spell. A Night Watch, we only have one of. So, do we want to dip into green? Or some bigger stuff. So, or we could play the Predator. Mm. In favor of what? Mm. This guy's deck is pretty aggressive. Mm. Um, you know, what, I'm gonna run it back. I think we just got a bad draw. And this is actually a much, much better hand. Um, perfect curve out. Perfect mana for the cards in the hand. That That's definitely a keep. I'd love to see a mulligan now. I was deciding. Mulligans to six. Let's go to five. Go to five. Come on, go to five. <laughs> he keeps six, okay. This is scry is really interesting. I wonder how important the scry is. If it's like better than having seven cards to get a look at the top card. It might be. Uh, but I don't know. I think my opponent's double queued. This is quite slow. Got a 
perfect. No one drop, I like it. I do want one more mana. A class rate healer would have been nice too. Just because I have so many allies in hand. Aren't very good. <laughs> that would be nice. Or if he's off red, that would be nice. Alright, so we got there with the mana. So we got a flyer. I almost think you hold on to that for a turn to kill the Drana's Emissary. Of course, maybe he has two of them? I don't think it's a reason to hold back. And we know we can't play, cast Planar Outburst yet. Wish I'd open that. Would have been nice. Kana's emissary. Yeah, he definitely got some sweet white cards. I wish I had in my deck. Uh, we do have one Felidar Cub. Should have him next turn basically no matter what. Unless he's able to hit five mana. And is it five mana to play an outburst? I think it is. Without the awaken. Doesn't look like he has a mana. Okay, perfect. So we curved out perfectly. There's not much to say except for, you know, that's what the deck's supposed to do. Um, so do we want on the on the um draw to put in the rampart? Or another Felidar Cub? Or even the Angelic Gift to be honest. Um flying seems to be a weak point for him. And if I put in the rampart, what do I take out? Probably. I do think the core cascader is worse on the draw. Healer's not. No, I think we can run it back. Um. So it's probably pretty greedy to ship this one back. I'm gonna keep it. I don't like it, but I'm gonna keep it. I like it a little better now. Still not great.
Yeah, yeah, first strike. Alright, so that is plenty of mana. Keep the Blighted Fen secret for now. I was down by like a minute and a half going into this game. Or going into game two. Yeah, we just sit back. Hope he plays something big. Well, not bigger than four mana. Yeah, that's actually fine. I would, he's trying to buy time, so I don't think he has much in his hand. Or he wouldn't be killing a 1 1. Um, and I would much rather have this on board anyway. But he does have a lot of removal, so. No guarantee we get to keep it. Go ahead and always yield to that. Um, so Smite the Monstrous actually does hit his Undo Great Horn if he has landfall, so we'll just go ahead and keep that up. Kill it now. Stasis snare, there it is. All right, allies every turn now, please. that always. See if we get reproached here. Yep. Just run him out of this stuff. Use all your tricks. On an F6. Hmm. I'm gonna put the so I have a ton of removal. Um, I'm just gonna hit him with this thing until he does something about it. Maybe I get a few more creatures on board before I play this um, smothering abomination. So I guess we just make him sack his creature. All right, we'll clear both of our boards. I love that he's using all this removal. And I just continue to draw it as well. Um, So it's pretty risky here to play the Smothering Abomination because I might have to end up sacrificing my own creature. And it's the only one in my hand. 
Um, so I'm just going to play lands and pass till I have something else to play. Yeah, so next turn I can awaken my rising miasma. Decks their way out of this. <laughs> or if you can just mono removal me until I'm dead. So I'd like to hit once with these, take them down to what, five before I play the abomination. So I guess that means this turn I will go ahead and attack and then play it. And he's got to do a lot now to get lethal. All right, we got the match. This has been Doug with Basement Level Magic, round one. Uh, we will see you back here for round two. Thanks for watching.